celebrities promoting skin care products that's just marketing what is the difference between the skin care of a man and a woman we say hum humar ke sath kaale ho rahe hain hum jo paida hue the hum bahut gore the what are some marketing strategies that as a consumer we should be aware of without sending me a sample they just shot me an email told me that this is the sunscreen that we want you to talk about on your page and i asked for the ingredients and i never got a reply could you also share some home remedies or face packs that we can make at home niacinamide um really not my favorite because Hi guys, I'm Advika and I'm Akshaj and we welcome you all to Two, Two Sides, Sides of a Coin. coin. Today we are here with Dr. Jishya. She's a dermatologist and has completed her education from UK, Germany, India and she's also helped millions of people online by debunking some myths and has helped by educating people online as well. We are so honored and glad to have you here. Welcome to Two Sides of a Coin. <laughs> My pleasure totally. Okay, so Dr. Jishya, that is a very unique name. What does it mean? Oh, it's a it's a Sanskrit word. It me it means puja. a uh, worshiping and it's another name of lord shiva oh. so yeah i was born in karnataka where sanskrit was a very common language and that's where my mom picked this up from wow interesting <laughs> it's a beautiful name thank you uh, can you tell us what your typical day looks like as a dermatologist i think i have the most interesting life ever um you know i wake up at 7 7:30 in the morning and first thing i do is have a shot of uh, coffee and go to the gym i hit the gym at 8 o'clock 8 to 9 i'm drilling um, and grilling in my gym with my trainer once i'm back i have my breakfast uh, put a, put my daughter to you know like school and um, 11 to 12 is when i generally have content ideation with me uh, with with my husband who's also an instagram uh, uh, you know influencer if you may say so um and we we bump in i ideas we talk to each other we discuss okay what's good the strategy going to be for the next week for the next month 12 o'clock i start my practice 12 to let's say 7 or 8 in the evening i'm seeing patients and post that i just i like to unwind myself you know uh, sit with my daughter chit chat with her again uh, at bedtime before we sleep we again throw in some ideas as to so a lot of my day actually goes into um, deciding and talking about skin care and yeah that's it uh, that's typical were you always interested in skin care or did something happen in which made you attract to this thing um my father is a dermatologist but uh, when i and i had the most beautiful skin when i was a child when i was young i people used to compliment my skin but hit teenage and the oil glands started functioning up and i had the worst bout of acne ever it was so depressing that i refused to go to school so my dad had to actually put me you know on medication he had to counseled me that see acne is going to be a part of your skin for the next 40 years the oil glands are going to be active so you better deal with it be on medication and uh, get rid of it and don't uh, sulk over it and He, he he actually had to uh, hold my hands um, and pull me through it because it was quite depressing because my skin went from from 100 to 0 in like a span of 2 months and everybody kept telling me that oh, you you know what's happening with you are you uh, are, are you okay are you sick your skin is not looking the best so it really took a toll on me on a 12, 12 year old so that inspired me you know i said okay if my dad can do this to me he can make me sit and uh, counsel me well utterly stabilize me as for my acne journey i can do this to my patients and i wanted to do that to a lot of teenagers so acne patients are my favorite kind i really take out time to talk to them and counsel them talking about acne why do we get them um so acne primarily happens as a result of hormones so mm-hmm. whenever you hit puberty and the hormones go on a rise they start fluctuating they have a tendency to you know open up your oil glands it's like a lock and key mechanism so um hormones go up the oil glands are open there's a lot of release, release of a lot of oil now this oil that we have in our skin is rich, rich in essential fatty acids and these make very good food for the bacteria so the bacteria start growing giving you acne you know and mm-hmm. pus So the number one rule in treating your acne is controlling your oil and that could be with dietary changes like cutting down on milk uh, milk intake cutting down on sugar intake oily foods um and also applying skin care that reduces your oil but like i mentioned that you know hormones are always going to be a part of you so do- people come and tell me the doctor whenever i take treatment for acne i'm okay but then when i stop it comes back because yes hormones are going to be inside you so consistency is the key in acne okay, and as a doctor when you're a dermatologist what are the most common con- concerns that patients come to you with common concerns acne hair fall these are the two common ones that people come to me nowadays especially where i practice in delhi you know because it's a tier one city and uh, people are quite broad minded they open minded they're more educated on skin care so i also get patients who want just a regular skin care you know they have good skin to do with i see no problem with their skin 
but they just want to know what to do to upkeep their skin talking about skin care what does it basically mean to be very honest it is a big part of self care okay. uh, it all started in lockdown why it started becoming popular is because people had a lot of time and they said okay let's reflect and let's do it ourselves and take out some time from our busy schedules to you know um beautify yourself uh, i have also seen that skin care helps a lot of people gain confidence back if their skin is healthy they are more confident in you know approach to other people they're more social beings they don't want to be hidden they're more outspoken it hel- it helps them career wise as well uh that's one as for if you're a housewife it could just mean sitting for 5 minutes and unwinding through the day when you're done with the kitchen we're done with kids just relaxing and if you're a teenager i've sa- i've had a teenager come to me and tell me doctor i eat very right because it helps with my skin care and i think that's a very good cue to take from a little girl uh <laughs> telling so it it is it is um, not just about skin it's also about you know holistic approach to health okay so what does your skin care look like so my skin care involves uh, a lot of things because i have complicated skin i have acne prone skin so i try to be consistent and uh, simple with my skin care routine i um, start my day with a big platter of fruits and dry fruits i take a lot of papayas watermelons uh, you know strawberries or b- good berries in the season and also lots of nuts um, that's right after my gym and uh, as for the ingredients that i like to use the first thing i use is a foaming cleanser because it's good for oily acne prone skin i also use 2% salicylic acid every day i use hyaluronic acid to moisturize my skin and i follow it up with a nice sunscreen that i like to repeat every 2 to 3 hours and at bed time i definitely double cleanse i use micellar water to cleanse my uh, skin first and then my regular cleanser i follow it again up with hyaluronic acid because bed time skin care is all about nourishing moisturizing and you know healing your skin back but i also do add a retinol to my skin care every day that's to unclog the pores brighten and tighten the skin and also helps with my acne. I do take procedures as well, um you know, skin care procedures. I take a botox regularly for my forehead uh, wrinkles. I take a hyfu for skin tightening that's pretty much every 6 to 8 months and um I regularly take carbon peel laser again for my acne. So these are the things I do for my skin. Okay, all these may sound a little bit complicated for a layman. Could you like break it down what are the basic pillars of skin care like hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, what do they mean? Uh so you know to be very honest that if you're very naive to skin care or you don't understand the ingredients too much and you don't want to get into the research, it's best to actually once meet a dermatologist to decipher these molecules to understand whether these are for you and once you have understood you can start doing it yourself. But just to break it down, a hyaluronic acid can be used by all skin types. It's primarily a moisturizer it's there in your skin it has a capacity to hold water so when you apply it you feel nourished plumped up the fine lines become better because the skin firms up salicylic acid is a molecule that is that dissolves the oil on your skin so it's a very good product for acne prone and oily skin glycolic acid on the other hand is for somebody who's dealing with blemishes and dark marks and you know tan uh, because sal- unlike salicylic this does not dissolve oil but it dissolves the skin cells on the top so somebody is looking for a fresher brighter appearance glycolic acid is for them coming to retinol retinol is an anti-aging molecule it is uh, a skin brightening molecule it could boost your collagen so it's anti-aging Primarily there is nothing a retinol cannot do. So retinol is for everyone and um, start with a lower percentage let's say a 0.5% and you know you can slowly take it up and I'm sure everybody can tolerate that. Niacinamide um you know everybody can use a niacinamide again but it's really not my favorite because it doesn't target any one particular concern you know it's just okay for everything it just it is okay for oil control it's okay for blemishes it's okay for pore tightening. uh but it's it's super safe so people mm-hmm. of all age groups can use it and everybody can use that anything in that i'm missing so. Uh, vitamin C. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin C is a cult favorite. Uh people like to uh, use vitamin C because they think it's very natural on your skin. And vitamin C is primarily an antioxidant which means it um, prevents oxidation on your skin and oxidation is the reason why we are aging. So that's a great anti-aging product. Again, which one of all of these is your favorite? Hands down retinol. You know, as dermatologists, we rave about retinols and like i mentioned there's nothing a retinol cannot do 
it's a truly a skin savior because it just makes your skin more youthful you know the, the things that are going wrong with age it just puts a full stop or let's say a comma to that and delays the signs of aging um okay. and also helps with acne pores everything so retinol is my favorite i mean what does basically anti aging mean how is it possible that we can age backwards <laughs> yeah that's my question <laughs> like i said we can't put a full stop but uh-huh. we can definitely put a comma, comma. to okay. it you know um see you're going to start aging uh the day you're born okay you never going to be a day younger than what you are today so uh, i cannot say that um, um you know there is a certain age to start skin care you know in fact to be very honest a a child as young as 6 months if their parents start putting them a sunscreen when they're mm-hmm. taking them out on a beach holiday or a long day out in the sun that's anti aging because sun has uv radiations it's going to damage your dna it's going to cause modifications and mutations so it is best to start using sunscreens from 6 months onwards of course there are sunscreens made for children which contain zinc oxide titanium dioxide these are chemical free sunscreens these have only mineral filters and everybody should use it so that's number one step in anti aging as for once you started developing the fine lines wrinkles which usually starts in 20s let's say 25 to 30 because a lot of us are not only exposing to sun but this constant exposure to the blue light you know uh, laptops mobiles netflix on you don't want to watch netflix on um tv you want to watch it on your ipad or your phone so it's just too much of concentration of light around the eyes and young people are coming to me with crow's feet fine lines under the eyes so i definitely put them on a retinol to start with uh, sometimes if you're not able to tolerate a retinol peptides are my go to molecules peptides are uh, softer they don't cause any problem they are safe in pregnancy and lactation unlike retinols and um i put put patients uh, on these anti aging molecules as early as 25 years of age okay and when should one start using these anti aging products when should we start in the mid 20s or yeah in the mid 20s is a good idea okay yeah uh, you see any day you start you're going to um start benefiting from it but if you if you're hitting your 25 then you must start using at least a retinol yeah <laughs> we're talking about sunscreen is it really the most important thing in skin care it's like you saying that okay let's build a home but let's n- not build the base that's not possible right uh, you have to prevent before you start treating or curing somebody for their skins now sunscreen is a prevention everything that's going wrong in the skin is because of natural aging and a lot of it is because of sun exposure or the blue light like i mentioned so sun protection is like shielding you from all of these uh, unnatural undesirable grievances on the skin mm. so sunscreen is hands down a must if you don't want to do skin care it's okay you can skip a moisturizer but you can't skip a sunscreen and how do we choose which sunscreen is best for us cuz like when we see the products we have spf 50 30 20 and then we also have pa++ which i still don't know what it means so how do we choose the right sunscreen you're right it's absolutely important to read the label carefully first is the texture if the texture of the sunscreen does not suit you you're not going to use it and the best sunscreen is the one that you would like to use so if it's matte you choose a sunscreen if you like you know uh, if you have oily skin people like to use silicone based or matte finish sunscreens if you have dry skin i recommend you try a cream based or a lotion based sunscreen because that's okay. going to suit you well if you have oily skin you can also choose a gel based sunscreen uh for pregnant women children under uh, 12 years of age and for lactating women physical sunscreens the ones that are free of chemical filters are good now coming to the label that we were talking about um spf means the amount of protection a sunscreen gives you from uvb radiations okay and PA means the amount of protection it is going to give you going to give you from UVA radiations. In fact, UVB is more common cause of cancers. Yeah. But that's little irrelevant in Indians because we have already brown skin. We 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 Melanin. don't really develop skin yeah. cancers. For us, it is more important to check the PA factor because aging, pigmentation, sunspots, all these are happening because of UVA. So PA three plus is a good rating for any um, sunscreen with good UVA protection. As for SPF thirty and fifty, the American Academy of Dermatology says SPF thirty is enough even for people who expose a lot to sun. Also, there's this new product which has which I've seen a lot. Of people are using which are sunscreen sticks. sticks yes yeah is that effective uh they're effective but again we still do not have a lot of data as to if when we're applying them the application is even enough mm-hmm. because you have to have an even coating on the skin to be able to protect you from sun damage that's one second 
a lot of these are contain waxes because to hold that stick together mm. you need yeah. waxes now that could be problematic for oily acne prone skin because it could be highly pore clogging especially if you're applying one after the other you know three or four times a day so people with normal skin i think it's okay or for body it's okay but for face i would still recommend that you use a traditional sunscreen okay uh do environment and our lifestyle also affect our skin like pollution that is happening or what we eat a hundred percent because like we were talking about oxidation mm -hmm. so all these factors the pollutants that you have the natural aging process because natural aging is also causing trauma to the dna right and that's because of a process called oxidation uh, it's similar to an apple that you cut and leave open so it oxidizes it, it yeah, shrivels yeah. it turns dark the same thing happens to our skin when it's exposed to the pollution we turn dark with age that's why people say hum humar ke sath काले हो रहे हैं हमारा रंग बहुत साफ हुआ करता था हम जो पैदा हुए थे हम बहुत गोरे थे सो दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द एनवायरमेंटल ट्रॉमा दिस इज व्हाट हैपेंस बिकॉज ऑफ पोल्यूशन एंड आल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ सन सो हम सब यही चाहते हैं कि हमें ऑक्सीडेशन से एक एक फुल स्टॉप मिल जाए ऑक्सीडेशन पे एंड दैट इज वाई यूजिंग इंग्रीडियंट्स लाइक विटामिन सी विटामिन ई फेडोलिक एसिड दीज हेल्प सो वेन वी टॉकिंग डायट वाइज आई एनकरेज पीपल टू इंक्लूड अ लॉट ऑफ एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट्स इन देयर डायट व्हिच मीन्स एटलीस्ट फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर डायट शुड बी रॉ ओके इट कुड बी फ्रूट्स तो हम रॉ ही खाते हैं बट वेजिटेबल्स आर समथिंग दैट वी ऑफन कुक बट थिंग्स लाइक बेल पेपर रॉ पपाया ब्रॉकली आइसबर्ग लेटस ऑल काइंड ऑफ यू नो फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स Vegetables that are red, yellow, green in color—they are rich in antioxidants, beta carotene, and all yeah, of that. Yeah. So, if you take these in your diet, definitely reflects on your skin and your overall health. I have a very uh, interesting question. What is the difference between the skin care of a man and a woman? Not very different, to be very honest. Um, it could depend because for men, skin care is a little. a uh, skin is little thicker mm -hmm. and second they are more exposed to pollutants generally typically but aajkal uh, to you know even women are exposing themselves a lot to the outdoor activities so for them uh, cleansing is very essential also ma males secrete a lot of lot more oil compared to yeah, women yeah. so cleansing twice it is very important a thicker moisturizer for men who have uh, you know normal or dry skin um of course if you have oily skin you can choose to skip a moisturizer and just use a sunscreen that has generally gel based so it gives you some hydration some skin uh, you know sun protection that's it yeah <laughs> okay uh could you also share some home remedies or face packs that we can make at home to use so honestly because i have dealt with such bad skin myself i've never tried any of the remedies okay but uh, from the little uh, that i've read in my books i can tell you that things like turmeric mm. curd uh, multani mitti of fuller's earth uh honey these are fine to eat, uh, you know apply on your skin my recommendation is that you stay away from acids like lemons oranges apples potatoes on your skin i have often seen people coming with reactions because of these rather than you know telling me coming and telling me doctor we benefited a lot out of it again okay, what's your opinion on face shaving like does shaving change the hair growth or the texture of your hair or something like that the answer is no it does not change anything and facial uh shaving is one of the safest methods of hair removal now for for example you have a tree that's growing and it you know you've seen that the tree tapers at the end it's yeah. never a, you know a constant size of bark that is there so it tapers it's similar with your hair it's because it's undergoing environmental trauma and it you know keeps uh, uh, reducing in the diameter now when you cut a tree from the a uh, bottom it's mm. going to have a bigger trunk okay it's same with your hair it has a bigger trunk in the in the bottom and it tapers in the end so if you're going to cut it it's going to feel thicker yeah. because the end is thicker but slowly when it grows it's going to go, grow back thinner so that's a myth and it's simple logic like something you do on the surface is not going to change the shape of the follicle or the hair root which is much underneath the skin getting the perfect glass like skin how can we get that at home with some products or something like diet or something else sure when you say glass skin it doesn't mean the skin is throwing light from mm. within that's not possible what it is it's a reflection of the light from the yeah. outside so the smoother the skin surface the better it's going to reflect light and for that if you want to do skin care what you can try is definitely putting hyaluronic acid because that's a translucent a transparent molecule so when it stays in your skin it actually reflects light that's one and second moisturizing if your skin is well moisturized you don't you don't see those fine lines so the serrations in the skin are gone and a well moisturized skin shines better compared to a dry or rough skin mm -hmm. all right uh, so these are the things that you can do at home of course um, sunscreen is a must so these basic three skin tips using hyaluronic acid moisturizing and sun protection will 
sufficiently take you to a place where you start appreciating your skin texture what about the snail mucin thing is that really effective so snail mucin is another it's an animal product but it's just like hyaluronic acid it has okay. a tendency to hold and uh, uh, keep water in the skin for a longer time and also because again it's transparent it just st- sticks to the collagen and starts reflecting light so um, you can use hyaluronic you can use snail mucin whatever suits you better uh, how real is the skin care industry so what are some marketing strategies that as a consumer we should be aware of like dermatologically tested versus yeah. approved what is the difference between them mm. so uh, from the longest time we've been influenced by advertisements yeah. uh, celebrities promoting skin care products and we get influenced because we feel that they've been using the same thing but we have to realize that that's just marketing mm. that's number one so don't be influenced by the person using the product uh, their skin they might not be really using the product mm. uh, second is be aware of lot of ingredients that are put into one product so i've seen brands saying that this also has niacinamide for brightening the skin this also has glycolic acid for exfoliation it'll have everything mm-hmm. but nothing no percentage is revealed mm-hmm. now for anything to work th- a certain threshold has yeah. to be reached so skincare actors have to have to be in adequate amount for it to work now these skincare ingredients because people feel that these are nice for skin all everybody's talking about them now if they're in a skincare product it might work for us mm. but then it's a dubious moisturizer which has just use these uh, ingredients as labels rather than actives yeah, yeah. so that's the second thing third is people should be educated in using uh, in reading a sunscreen label i've seen a lot of brands claim that they have spf 50 they have pa3 plus and uh, you blue light protection but when i read the label i realize they hardly have one or two filters and that's not enough label you mean by the thing which is written behind yes exactly Ingredients. so Ingredients, uh, okay. yeah i wish i wish there was a simpler way to decode this but i i hope to do that some day on my channel where <laughs> i tell people what ingredients of sunscreen to look for okay. uh, even popular brands they have just no sunscreen filters there was a brand who sent me um you know without sending me a sample they just shot me an email that we would like uh, you to try this and promote this on your page um i said okay um i'll be happy to do that because it was one of my seniors who was who owns the brand so their pr agency uh told me that this is the sunscreen that we want you to you know talk about on your page i said all right and i asked for the ingredients they sent me an ingredient list and i could see some you know some plants some oils and you know some uh, ayurvedic stuff and um which i really have no knowledge of but i couldn't see any sunscreen filters so i asked them can you please send me the sunscreen filters and i never got a reply for them so <laughs> yeah things like this happen even to me so these things you should be wary of yeah what are the three skin care best advice that you would give to anyone no matter what the age group is uh so number one is which is most relevant in this era do not look at your screens after you've switched off the lights okay it's one of the common reasons why we are all aging quicker and we don't want to <laughs> we are more aware but so that's one second is if you choose uh, to do skin care do it consistently because it's a journey we all of us uh, all of us will have to follow it's not a destination that we okay we reach there and then we are mm-hmm. done so be consistent with skin care that's going to be second and uh, number 3 is uh, mind your diet and exercise they are very very important you know um exercising brings happy hormones it's uh, gives you a happy glow in the face because of release of these serotonins and other things um also uh, diet wise like i mentioned i i also ensure that at least 40% of my diet is raw okay so now we're going to be moving on to the next segment this is a very <laughs> new segment that we specially made for this podcast this episode uh it's called myth busting so we'll say some statements and you can let us know if they're true if they're not these are just common assumptions that people have Yeah. Uh, the statement is expensive products are always better. Kind of true, kind of not true. I would but uh, more towards a myth uh, because a uh, lot of uh, pharmacy brands as we know they don't come with a marketing cost. So they will be less expensive for sure and uh, they're well researched and they do good to your skin. The next one is um uh You only need sunscreens during sunny days. Not at all. You need sunscreen indoors, outdoors, rain, sun, shine. You have to use a sunscreen. Sometimes because of blue light, I use a sunscreen in the night as well. Like when I'm going out for a party and I know there're going to be a lot of LED lights, there's going to be a lot of television, you know. So, a blue light protection even then. Sleeping with makeup on ages you faster. A kind of true because uh, like we was discussing oxidation. So, 
all the all these products that you put on your skin they oxidize your skin they clog your pores they um increase the oil production and they break down your skin so definitely you age faster oily skin does not need moisturizer very very not true Oh. Yeah, it's a myth. The simple fact is that our skin is an active organ. It's a it's a you know livable structure, and uh, the way it functions is that if you dehydrate it or you don't apply a moisturizer, it's going to feel not nourished and it's going to release its own natural oils. So to compensate, it will feel oily. Now, if you apply a little moisturizer from the top, it will feel happy, nourished, and it will really not uh, activate its own oil glands. Drinking more water improves your skin. Drinking enough water definitely improves your skin, but more. No, natural ingredients are always better for your skin. Everything is, you know, drawn from nature. Either uh, you know, in this way or that way. Even simple, uh, simple things like, um, let's say, a vitamin C. It's actually made from kaka du plum or oranges, which are natural. It's just that they're more uh, concentrated. Uh, they're you know uh, free from other ingredients that those na- natural products have the problem with like i said the natural products is that they come with other ingredients which might not be required or beneficial for your skin or maybe harmful for your skin mm-hmm. so we need to extract only the important ones and then use them we are now moving on to a final segment that is rapid fire where we are going to ask you unscripted questions and you're going to answer them as soon as possible and as honestly as possible <laughs> let's do <Okay>. it <laughs> Are you a morning person or a night person? Morning person. Your favorite skincare brand? A uh, Biore. Okay. What's your go-to beauty hack? Apply a sunscreen. Okay. Sheet masks or clay masks? Clay masks. Best skincare tip you've ever received? Be consistent with your skincare. SPF in makeup or SPF SPF separately in sunscreen? SPF in a sunscreen. Uh, cleansing oil or micellar water? For my skin, because I have oily skin, micellar water. But for people with very dry skin, cleansing balms are also okay. Gel based or cream based moisturizers? For me, gel based. But for people with dry skin or who want anti aging, cream based. What's the weirdest or the funniest complaint or? concern that any patient has come up to you with i i had a patient who came to me for full eyebrow removal because oh she wow. because she wanted to just uh, you know uh, experiment with it every day some day wanted a thinner one or something she said a doctor i'll make it myself can you please remove them off <laughs> <laughs> so, wow yeah. uh, if you are left with only three things in the world what would they be three things um it has to be um my hat okay. um yeah <laughs> this is the first time we have heard about a hat <laughs> yeah because a lot of sun protection okay physical protection is very important that's number one second is um if i was to choose a skincare product i would actually choose a clay mask because yeah if you're all alone you want to have to do some self care <laughs> that's number two and number three is a big big glass of water oh, wow these are the most unique ones we've ever heard <laughs> what are some sources that people can look up to to read about skin care um uh, there are good websites uh, like insider there's body there's instyle uh, these are the ones that um, offer authentic skin care reads and i i trust them yeah okay who has been your role model when you were growing up um uh, my role model there've been lots of them uh i think uh, to be very honest i just wanted to be a nice human at the end of the day so swami vivekanand was somebody wow. i really looked up to i read a mm-hmm. lot of his work his books a lot of his speeches and i was deeply deeply inspired by him sunrise or sunsets uh sunrise i'm a morning person totally i lo- like to wake before the sun does <laughs> yeah out of this whole conversation what is that one fact that you would definitely want the people who are listening to try out or one take away message so uh you know skin care starts with having confidence in yourself and uh, not trying to achieve or be anybody else or anybody else's skin but trying to be the best version of yourself and that's totally possible okay that was it we really had so much fun i got so many of my doubts clear how was it for you yeah i mean i think i'm going to go skin care practice <laughs> karne wala hu pehle yeah, he does nothing like literally nothing a face wash is the minimum he puts <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for joining us and debunking so many myths and clarifying so many assumptions that we had and i'm pretty sure our audience also had okay and we'll also be sharing her social medias in the description so go check them out you can also check her youtube channel which is uh, which is by the name serene skin, skin. yeah and yeah thank That's you so it. much for joining us thank you so much for having me here and i thoroughly enjoyed uh, discussing skin care with you guys <laughs> okay guys make sure you like share subscribe and the podcast would be available on all major platforms youtube uh, instagram which goes by the name of two sides of a coin underscore podcast as well as amazon music and google podcast <laughs> cheers, cheers.